welcome to my channel. Today we are batch cooking. My father-in-law needs a few meals so I said I'd make a load for him. So that's what we're going to do today. So wish me good luck while we start on our first start on our first, while we start on our first one. Liz, how's that going to go? So to make potato hash all we do is put a few tablespoons of oil of choice in the bottom of a pan. Put your heat on high and let that pan heat up. This is basically a leftovers recipe. Feel free to put in whatever you want in this. One 500, I think it's five, no, 250 gram packet of new potatoes that have been boiled and sliced in half. And the best thing to do with these is to leave well alone while they cook. Salt on them while we're cooking. The thing with potatoes is they need a lot of salt, but we're going to be adding other things in this instance, so just a little bit of to start off with. We can taste as we go. And pepper. Now, if you leave it now just to crisp up a little bit. The more you move it, the less likely it is to crisp it. I can see smoke coming off it now, so what I'm going to do is give it a good shake. Okay, and then leave it to rest again. When your potatoes are starting to colour like these ones are, it's time to add in the bacon and the sausage. So, I'm just going to put in some chopped up bacon and some chopped up sausage. And yeah, there's a lot, but I'm doing a lot of meals for this. And what that will allow to do is the flavors from the sausage and the bacon to go into the potatoes. So when you get to this stage, you need to use a spoon, unless you're very adept with tossing. Let that sizzle in for a bit and let those flavours amalgamate. After a few minutes, give it a bit of a turnover. Or a push around, whichever. So I'm going to add peppers and onions and tomatoes. And there's a lot. Now just slice them in half, the tomatoes. And the onions, they are just sliced and these are little cherry tomatoes that I've put in. Yes, the pan's getting quite a bit thick fuller. I think I should maybe just have a bigger pan, but never mind, we'll work with it. So we're just gonna gently stir these in. Just go easy, as I say, there is a lot. And what we're aiming for here is for the onions to cook. And once you've got them mixed in, Grab a lid and just put it on for a few minutes. Take your lid off and the steam should have helped to cook most of it. So what we're going to add now is a few flavourings. So I'm going to add some basil, some dried basil, about a teaspoon. Now I've got half a teaspoon here, so I'm going to use two of those. And then we'll add some Italian seasoning. teaspoon of garlic. The reason why I haven't put garlic in before now is because it can burn quite easily, especially when it's as small as this is. And then we're going to pop in whoops, some chunky chopped tomatoes on top, along with some water to just, to, just to clean out the tin. And that, of course, will help the vegetables to cook as well. Once you've done that, give it a stir. A gentle stir mind. So what we're looking for now is for that just to cook a little bit longer. So we'll just leave it there and let it cook for a wee while. Let all those flavours amalgamate. This has been cooking for a couple of minutes now. You can see the smoke coming off there when I put the light on. So all I'm going to do now, everything's cooked. All I need to do is sprinkle some fresh, fresh chives all over. 
just gives it a bit of a fresh hit and helps with the green a bit of green is always good if you don't want chives you can use parsley you can use basil if you want my father-in-law is not a big fan of basil so we we'll, don't put a lot into that he likes things plain and simple so that was roughly one handful of chives there and as you can see the fluid has now gone from the bottom so it's time just to let it cool serve it up if you want to serve it up right now but i'm putting it into boxes for my father-in-law to freeze and this hello well our second recipe today is a deconstructed lasagna type recipe it's favorite throughout the family it's a pasta bake liz how's that going to go on thanks for asking liz we're gonna do this stage by stage this is our most loved recipe of all time, I think, in this household. Loved by kids and loved by adults alike. So in we start with a little bit of oil. And in this instance, I'm using garlic oil. So about a tablespoon. There we go. Onions, carrots and celery going in while the oil is still warming up. We don't want it to be hot in this instance. Why don't we want it to be hot? Because I don't want to brown my onions. I just want to cook them through. As your onion has started to soften, now is the time to put your mince in. So we have 500 grams of steak mince there, lean steak mince. And I'm going to, I was using a spoon, but I'm going to use my handy dandy chop stir, which is ideal in this situation. I'll just put my, and what we need to do is just break it all up and brown it. And this makes easy work with that. This might be a good time for me to ask you, have you hit that like button if you like what you're seeing? As you can see, my meat is now brown. That didn't take long. long. <laughs> it didn't take long, thanks to the chopster. So what we're going to do now is add some flavorings. And in this instance, we're adding Italian seasoning, two teaspoons. There's one. A teaspoon of basil. Basil. Give me a like if you know what who that <laughs> if you know where that is from. <laughs> and a teaspoon of or one clove of garlic. You can of course put more in if you want to. On top of that, we're going to put a tablespoon of tomato puree in. Push it down to the end keep going let's say that's just under a tablespoon by the looks of it okay we're going to mix all that in now you have to cook out tomato puree um, it's quite strong and unless you cook it out you end up with this awful bitter flavor okay once we've done that we need two bay leaves so two fairly large bay leaves or several little ones so we're going to put one and a bit to it along with one tin of finely chopped tomatoes it's just your standard bolognese recipe this pop that in and half a can half a tomato can of water just to rinse it out really more than anything two oxo cubes oxo cubes or beef stock whatever beef, beef stock you want so there's one going in I just find this helps to make the flavour richer if I can get it to break up <laughs> Oh, I'm a weakling. What can I say? There we go. There's one and two coming that way. And the last thing to add when I get into it is a red wine stock cube. These give so much flavour. I cannot tell you how lovely they are. Preferable to put hot water in, but I forgot to boil my kettle, so we'll put them cold in. Here we go. Half pint going in there. And then bring it to the boil and let it simmer 
for about half an hour, 20 minutes to half an hour. Remembering to give it the odd stir. It's time to add your cooked pasta. Add it gradually to start off with. So cook your pasta first and then add it gradually. going to do is tip it into a dish so or spoon it in whichever's easiest oh I've seen a bay leaf there I'm gonna have to pick that up it's in the middle so spread it about there it is and I'm cheating I'm going to be using Dolmio lasagna chopper I'm cheating because life's too short cheese that I've got in the fridge so I've got a little bit of mature cheddar which needs to go on because it's just about finished there's hardly anything left in there so just stick that on we've got some red Leicester this is the time to use up all those little bits that you have lying around if you've got any that is not grated and you want to use that up then feel free this is the time to use it if you've got any parmesan that's good on top and just basically use what you have there we go up there and it's always good to add a bit of pepper so i always put a bit of pepper on top Okay, then it goes in the oven, gas mark six. And this is what it looks like when it comes out the oven. Just gonna let it cool down and then divide it into portions for the father-in-law. Enjoy. Our final recipe today is a really fast recipe and it's basically taking stuff that's in your store cupboard and using it up. So Liz, how are we gonna do our chicken pie recipe today? This is one of my easiest recipes, this, and although it comes out really tasty, people look at me when I tell them how I make it. So I'm gonna give it to you now. And all it is, some already cooked chicken that you can get out the freezers in Aldi, Tesco's, or anywhere really. Pop that into your dish, if you can get it out. <laughs> My advice as well is to give it a bang on the side before you actually get it out because it comes in like this otherwise, which I forgot to do. There we go. So there's one. I notice as well they're making these bags smaller. I'm sure they used to be twice the size. So just spread it out. We're going to put in some leeks. These are just chopped up fresh leeks that I froze and I've got them left over. So we're going to put in some leeks. So that's equivalent to probably one leek. Then we're going to use some mixed vegetables. Okay. So mixed vegetables going in. A great way this is a really good recipe for a mum if you want you know if you're always busy um, all you have to do is basically just throw it together and then bum it in the oven it's so easy it isn't even a recipe really it's just a throw together I used to make oops I used to make the chocolate sauce chocolate sauce I used to make the sauce myself, the white sauce, but I don't anymore. I found an, easy, an even easier way. So put as much or as little veg in as you want. Then taking a jar of white lasagna sauce, what we're going to do is just pour it in. Usually this takes about a jar of sauce. Okay, once you've done that, it's time to put the topping on. And the topping in this case 
I told you this was easy. It's just raw puff pastry, and this is ready roll puff pastry. So unroll your puff pastry if you can. This has been in the fridge for a wee while, just overnight. So it should be fine. Now it's up to you how you do this, I have to say, but I usually score the top in some way, shape or form. So, oops, from this corner to that corner, don't go all the way through. We're just looking for a score. And don't go right to the edges. And then across the way. There we go. And all I do now is I take this, take it off, oopsie, and then pop it, if you can, oop, on top of there. So don't worry too much about it, it, it is very durable. Okay, and then just tap it into place. And all I do with the edges is just fold it in. To be honest, my family like the edges, so. Okay, once you've done that, make a hole in the center so we let any steam out. So whisk up an egg and then just paint it on your pastry. If you don't have an egg handy or you don't want to waste an egg in this manner, you can use milk. And I have on occasion just used a little bit of oil. chicken pie when it comes out of the oven. Hot, crispy, lovely. That's all for this week folks. I hope you like what you're seeing. If you did, hit the like button, it would be great, thank you. It helps the algorithm, it helps to push it out to other people so they can see what I'm doing. Um, if you wish to as well, please think about subscribing. 90% of everybody who watches my channel doesn't subscribe and it would be nice to see you there. If you are a new subscriber, then leave a comment in the section below telling me which recipe is your favorite one. Okay, that's it for this week. Liz out.